Olá, estamos iniciando mais uma entrevista do nosso programa de pós-graduação Quali Saúde da UFRN. Hoje nós temos o prazer de receber a professora Emma Louise Evelyn. A professora Emma, ela é Research Fellow do Sapphire Group, University of Leicester, em Harvard T. H. Chan School of Public Health. A professora Emily, ela publicou recentemente no BMJ Open uma pesquisa sobre a implementação do checklist nos países da África e no Reino Unido. Então, eu vou perguntar para ela qual foi as principais lições aprendidas nessa pesquisa. Professora Emily, what are the lessons learned from the, your research about the implementation of surgical checklist in the UK and Africa? Well, I think the first thing that our research contributes and is part of a, a body of literature that demonstrates this is that the checklist is not a quick fix. It's not a magic bullet, uh, something simple that can be easily rolled out and scaled up. Um, the checklist itself is a tool. It's a technical tool. It's a list of reminders of things to do and in and of itself won't fix the problems with patient safety. Uh, in getting it implemented in a way that is going to enhance patient outcomes, reduce complications, reduce post-operative mortality, is a complex sociocultural intervention. It means changing human behaviors, attitudes, organizational systems, team dynamics. Uh, so it's actually something very complex and it requires a multifaceted approach. So in order to implement the checklist effectively to secure compliance, um, it's clear that it's not going to be just a question of giving people the checklist and telling them to go ahead and use it, or simply of training people about how to use it in the OR. It also requires creating a context and environment that is enabling and supportive of checklist use. So that could involve uh, changing organizational systems, providing more resources to make the checklist, uh, to make performing the checks meaningful. So, for example, uh, in one of the sites uh, where we were studying, uh, there were no surgical markers to mark the site. Um, and yet they were asking the question, is the site marked? Well, clearly it's meaningless in that context. Um, and that carries risks as well, because if people feel that it's pointless doing it, it's going to encourage resistance. You can also encourage people to record incorrect and inaccurate inf information and generate different risks. Um, another example would be having the necessary protocols or systems in place. So, for example, um, checking whether or not antibiotics have been given um, assumes that there's a system, in, a protocol in place to determine when you should give antibiotics and when it's not appropriate, and that there's a system that enables you to know if they've been uh, given or not. And so it might require introducing some of those organizational systems. Um, The other thing is that uh, it requires a huge amount of effort to ensure that everybody is on board with the checklist, everyone buys into it, uh, that there's support for its use, that people see it as something of value and meaningful in their work. And that's not always the case. I think in most places, and certainly in our study, there was a lot of resistance amongst some staff and uh, most commonly amongst surgeons. And the uh, additional problem with that is surgeons tend to be at the top of the hierarchy within the OR. And so if they're refusing to use it, it can be difficult for the other staff in the OR to challenge them and to insist to a surgeon that he does something that he doesn't want to do. Um, so it's important really to have a very multidisciplinary process right from the beginning uh, to give people a chance to air and uh, discuss their objections to facilitate a process whereby it can be uh, customized to suit the local context, suit the local workflow, um, so that everybody generates a sense that, uh, that there's some consensus, that this is the checklist, that we see there's value in using this checklist, it's what we want to do in our theatres for our patients. Um, so I think really what, what I'm trying to say is the checklist encodes assumptions, assumptions about the context, For example, that there are pulse oximeters, that there are appropriate systems in place, that you do have staff who are going to introduce themselves to each other or will agree to start introducing themselves to each other. And those assumptions don't always hold. So 
uh, effective implementation is a question of looking at the context, understanding that context, and um, working out where you may need to make changes to enable people to use the checklist, to make it meaningful to use the checklist. Muito bom. E como última pergunta, eu vou perguntar à professora Emily, qual é a importância do checklist na segurança do paciente? Emily, how is the importance of the checklist implementation in the patient safety, in your opinion? I think checklists in general and the surgical safety um, have an important role to play in, in, in patient safety and that the surgical safety checklist has the potential to save a lot of lives. I think the key message I want people to uh, take away if they're thinking about implementing it would be that it's not something simple and that uh, implementing it effectively takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. It's important to have a really clear theory, a good reasoning for why you're taking the approach that you're taking, and to make sure that you use data wisely, that you monitor what you do, you reflect on what you do, and most importantly of all, to talk to the people on the ground and really make use of the local wisdom. Muito bom, muito agradecido a professora Emily. Eh, nós voltaremos em outras entrevistas. Muito obrigado. <música>